When people are looking for car advice and they ask me, what car should I buy for me and my family? I normally respond with the same thing. Get a BMW X5, they're brilliant. To which they normally respond, all right, Captain Moneybags, I'm not made of cash. And if that's the case, I say, quite simply, buy a Dacia. And if the person asking that question is blessed with the gift of extreme fertility and has a very large family, I'd specifically tell them to get the new seven-seater Dacia Jogger, which is the cheapest seven-seater on the entire planet that I know of. How cheap is it? £14,995, which is absurd. If you're looking for another family car with seven seats for that kind of cash, you are not going to find it. Trust me. Which begs the question then, what's wrong with it? Well, actually, it's quite good, especially from a looks perspective. I mean, it's quite funky. It's not quite an estate, not quite an MPV, not quite a, a crossover. I'm not really sure how to describe it really, but on the whole, it does kind of work. I say kind of though, because the front end, I love. It looks a bit like the Dacia Sandero stepway, but then the back end is something else entirely. And you do notice the point at which the front joins the back, just here on the B pillar, where there's suddenly a 40 millimeter step up, which to me makes it look like this is two separate cars or that it was designed by two separate teams. One who did the front, one who did the back, and those teams didn't really talk to each other or like each other. Essential, comfort and extreme SE trim levels are available. This is the top model, the extreme SE, which has a still reasonably inexpensive starting price of £17,395 and comes with 16 inch black alloy wheels, extra badges and five colour choices, including this lovely terracotta. Around the back, the design is very simple. It looks nothing like a Dacia Sandero stepway, but it does look a bit like a Volvo XC60. I think you'll agree. And the reason for that are these lights, which are very narrow at the top, but then kick out towards the hips of the car. Dacia's reason for that is that by placing the lights on the extreme edges of the vehicle, it allows for a wider boot opening. And we can see if that's true or not. I mean, it's fairly wide, but you do have these sections down here, which do limit the loading space ever so slightly. Now, it's a seven seater, which means that when you have all seats in place, the boot space is quite limited. This is 170 liters of room, which is kind of Ford Fiesta territory, really. But you can fold down these rear seats by doing this and doing that. And it's actually quite easy. When the seats are in this position, it's obviously a lot more spacious in there, but the load area is still not completely flat. So loading in a suitcase, for example, isn't the most convenient thing in the world. However, these seats do fold forward out of the way. I'll just demonstrate that. You pull these red toggles. There's one. And there's another, and you can get much more space in the car by putting those out of the way. Those seats, by the way, can be removed completely. I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, let me show you the back of the jogger, specifically the second row arguably the most important area of this car. This space is why people will choose to buy this car, so I've got to tell you about it. Um, first thing I notice is that the seats are a little bit on the firm side. I wouldn't call them uncomfortable, but definitely firm. Also, it's not as wide as I'd expected. I think you could get two grown-ups back here, but three grown men, mm, gonna get a little bit cozy, I think. As for foot room, loads of space down there for my feet. Leg room, Okay, I expected a bit more, if I'm being honest. That front seat is adjusted for me. Loads and loads of headroom though. I'd actually trade a little bit of headroom for some more legroom. Apart from that though, not much else to tell you. Actually, there are no USB ports back here. There is a single 12 volt outlet, but no independent vents for your own climate control. You've got to rely on the vents from the front. But these trays are very clever. Uh, they let your kids eat their lunch on, and there's a little gap here for you to slot a mobile phone to watch YouTube on long journeys. And if you pull the tray towards you, boom, a nice little cup holder. That is a very clever touch. Plus, and this is underrated, the window winds all the way down. As for the front of the car, well, it's going to be very familiar to anyone who's ever driven in a new Dacia, specifically the Sandero Stepway, because 
that's pretty much what this car is. And that's no bad thing because there are a lot of things to like about the front of the cabin. For example, these seats look and feel really nice. There are a lot of plasticky elements, of course. So down by the center console and the cup holders, a lot of plastic on the doors, upper dash, lower dash. There's a lot of plastic in here, but Dacia, credit to them, have concentrated on putting nicer materials where your eyes naturally fall. And that includes the middle of this dashboard and on this armrest. As for general controls, everything is nicely laid out. For example, the heating, ventilation and climate controls are a no brainer. That one's for your fans, that one's for your temperature and that one's for the direction of your fans. So you're never gonna get confused about that. But then things get a little bit more complicated where the infotainment system is concerned. On the entry level cars, you get no infotainment screen. All you get is a place to clip your mobile phone and two speakers, which is a little bit mean. The mid-range spec does come with an eight inch display and four speakers, but then the top level comes with all of that plus a built-in navigation system. And that's what's in this particular car. And the whole thing is very basic. The screen's not very high res, but it's easy to look at, easy to see. And quite frankly, you're never gonna use much of it apart from Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, all of which works reasonably well. And there's even wireless Apple CarPlay in this system as well. Very nice. So what is the new Dacia Jogger like to drive on the road? Well, the first thing I wanna talk about actually is the engine. I don't normally do this, but the engine is a defining characteristic in this car. It's a one litre, three cylinder engine that makes 110 horsepower and 200 Newton meters of torque, which is not an awful lot. It's a tiny engine for such a big car. Normally you would never see an engine like this in a seven seater, but where I was worried, I needn't have been worried at all because actually the performance is pretty decent. On paper, it's not lightning quick. It'll do 0 to 62 in 11 and a bit seconds, but out here in the real world, if I knock it down into third gear and floor it, the pickup is more than adequate, believe me. Again, even in fourth gear, you get quite a lot of oomph when the turbos kick in and it never ever feels slow. Admittedly, I am by myself and if I was calling six other people in the car, then it might feel a little bit lethargic, but no complaints whatsoever regarding the engine in the performance department. Staying on that kind of subject, I wanna talk about the gearbox next. It's only available with a manual six-speed gearbox. So if you learn to drive in an automatic and you can't drive a stick, then you're out of luck, I'm afraid, because an automatic is not available in the Dacia Jogger currently. They will offer a hybrid version of this car next year, and I believe that will come with an automatic box. But if you don't like rowing your own gears or you don't know how to, well, this is not the car for you. One of the things you notice immediately when you jump into a jogger is the noise it makes. It's quite a, a vocal car, shall we say, and a lot of that is down to the engine. Three cylinder engines have a very familiar thrum about them. They kind of purr their way along and you can definitely hear a lot of that in this car. It's not an unpleasant noise, but you do hear a lot of it. And part of the reason for that is this car doesn't come with a lot of sound deadening. Normally in cars, they fit a load of carpet type material to soak up the sound from the engine. But in this, Dacia wanted to save a bit of cash so you don't get a lot of sound deadening. And you do hear, yeah, a lot of noise from under the bonnet. There's also a fair amount of noise that you can hear from the tires and at motorway speeds, you can hear a reasonable amount of wind noise. So it's definitely not the most quiet or refined car in the world, but for the money, it's definitely not bad. One of the most impressive things about the Jogger, I think is the suspension it really does do a great job of soaking up imperfections in the road. Okay, this road isn't the worst in the world. It's fairly smooth today, but whenever I've encountered a pothole or any other lumps and bumps, it's done a tremendous job of soaking those up. It really feels very comfortable. Likewise, the seats in the front are quite comfortable as well and very supportive. So on the whole, yeah, it's not like Rolls Royce quality, but it's a fairly plush car to drive in. The steering is really good as well. It's nice and light, it's accurate, and there's even a little bit of feel and feedback in it. So if you do decide to drive in a sporty fashion, then you always know exactly how much grip the car has left. 
I've got to give credit to how maneuverable the car is as well. It's a big old thing, the jogger, but because the steering is so light, parallel parking is an absolute breeze. And it's worth saying that visibility all around the cabin is top notch. Even in those tricky corners, the blind spots over there in the back corners, either side, you can see pretty much everything that's going on in this car. So it's not an intimidating car to drive. Another thing that you notice with the jogger is that all the main controls are very logically arranged. So you don't have to take your eyes off the road for too much to locate specific buttons and functions that you need. For example, the heated seats are right there where you expect. The volume control for this car, it's not a knob, but it's in a very simple position on the left-hand side of the infotainment screen. And you even get a little mobile phone holder up here on top of the dashboard. I've got to give credit to the brakes as well. They use old school drum brakes in the rear, but they stop the car really nicely. And you always have a lot of confidence in your ability to bring this thing to a standstill. The only problem is when you do come to a standstill, you feel a fair bit of vibration from the engine, which is not the nicest feeling in the world. Although I do suppose it helps to discourage you from idling and wasting fuel. Another thing I want to point out is that even though this car, the extreme version, comes with a reversing camera as standard, which makes it easier to park, when you put it in reverse and you try to go backwards, the camera disappears the moment you go above 10 miles an hour. So if you're in a hurry to reverse, you have no idea where you're going, which makes it seem well, a little bit pointless, really. Let's talk about economy now. They reckon you can get somewhere between 47 and 49 miles per gallon, which sounds great, but that is on paper. One thing I've found, especially with one litre three-cylinder engines, is that you kind of have to work them really hard in order to get them to move as quickly as you want. And by doing that, you use quite a lot of fuel. And that's especially true in a seven-seater, which quite a lot of the time is going to be hauling quite a lot of people. So. Today, I've been averaging 21 miles per gallon. Now, obviously, you might be able to do better than me. You might have a lighter foot than I have, but I do think it's worth pointing out. As I've been pointing out, there's plenty to love about the Jogger, not to mention a fair few things not to love. In fact, if you go looking for them, there are a few items bordering on the territory of things I hate. So to summarize, here's the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Remember when I told you that these rear seats were removable? Well, I wasn't lying. All you do is you pull down these red tabs and suddenly the whole thing can be lifted out of the car completely. I'll do the other one. That is done, that is done. Lift that out, nice and easy. And they're quite light as well, surprisingly. And then you can even make more space in the back of this thing by tipping the second row of seats all the way up. So now what you got is a van. The Jogger really is unbelievably cheap. I was speaking to the product manager earlier of this car and he told me that when it was set in the price, they actually browsed Auto Trader to try and find new and used seven seater cars and then try to set the price of this car lower than those. And I'm looking at Auto Trader right now and I've set a couple of parameters, 10,000 miles, built in the last sort of three or four years and literally all that's coming up is that Chia Joggers. There's the odd outlier, but generally speaking, there is no other new or used seven seater car that's better value than this thing. On the comfort and extreme versions of the Jogger, you get these really clever roof rails, which double up as roof bars. What you do is you lift up these little flaps here and then you use a Torx key to rotate them horizontally, put them back down, and suddenly your roof rails become roof bars, on top of which you can carry 80 kilograms of weight to haul around the roof box or bicycles or extra children without having to splash out on an extra set of roof rails. Very clever. Solid as well. If you look closely, you'll see that the badges on this car aren't actually badges. This, it's just stickers, honestly, it's just stickers. Look at that, on the Dacia, on the Jogger, stickers, stickers on the side. None of it is real. And actually, I wonder how long that will last because you might get little kids in the neighborhood peeling off your Dacia logo and reorganizing it. They could spell acid. This mobile phone holder that I mentioned earlier on is a great idea, but 
it can get in the way, especially if you've got your steering wheel adjusted in a certain position. You can move it forward, backwards, up and down. And in this position, it's very easy for you to brush the mobile phone as you're driving along. Uh, look at that, see? Yeah, it's just, it's not ideal, really. You can actually remove this thing, but there's nowhere else to put it. Really, it should be on the other side. I'm a little bit surprised by how agricultural some of the connectors on these rear seats especially feel in this car. For example, when you move the seat backs up and down, there are exposed hinges here, which just, they look a bit dangerous. You wouldn't want a kid anywhere near these because it might not end very pretty for them. I also don't appreciate how sharp some of the edges are. I mean, they look like they're soft plastic, but they feel like hard metal. So it really digs into your fingers. Yeah, maybe this is a car you might want to use with gloves predominantly if you're moving these seats around. Ultimately, I think the Jogger is really good. No, I'll go further than that. I think it's brilliant. I think considering the amount of money you're paying, you're getting so much car for that cash. Obviously, it's not as refined or as well equipped as many other cars, but many other cars cost many, many more pounds. You've got to remember, you get what you pay for. And with the Dacia Jogger, you're actually getting a lot more than what you pay for. So on that basis, I love it. I think anybody that's looking for a really good family car that is tremendous value for money really does have to look at the Dacia Jogger.